Hi, welcome to The Positive Side. My name is Ann DeSantis and I'm your host. Today I have a great guest. His name is Father Daniel Bowen and he's a Mercedarian friar with the, with the, order, the, the order of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mercy. It is an order that I'm very familiar with because I'm the director of the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith, and we were formed from the Mercedarian Religious Order. So, Father, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And I was wondering if maybe we could begin our, our conversation, our moments together with a quick prayer, if that'd Absolutely. be all right. Absolutely, thank you. All right, let's begin as we begin all good things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the opportunity for us to gather here together. And we ask your blessing be not only upon us, but upon all those who will be viewing this, uh, this telecast. We're, we're so thankful, Lord. We ask that you continue to bring your joy and your peace and your love to them and to their loved ones in their life and in their walk with you, Lord God. And if they do not know you, Lord, we, we ask your blessing be upon them as well, Lord, that they might know that you are a God of love, a God of peace, and a God who looks to grant freedom to those who are ever held in any way in a captivity. We ask this all in the name of Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen, thank you for starting with the prayer. It's always so wonderful. You're welcome. And I've had thank some other uh, Mercedarian friars before on the show, so it's always a blessing. And my own personal story is the way that I met uh, the Mercedarian friars was actually through Father Daniel looking for a spiritual director, making some phone calls in the Philadelphia area. And he was the first person that, that I met. So I'm so grateful now working for, you know, the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation. And no you can find it. us information about us on uh, nonatus.org. So, uh, Father, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your, your faith journey. Oh yeah, I'd be happy to do that. It's not probably a faith story most people would, would expect, you know, a lot of people would figure, you know, being all me and a priest uh, in a religious order and that I was probably born and raised Catholic. But in fact, that's actually not the case. Mm. Uh, I actually was born and raised in a household. Uh, my father didn't really practice a faith in he himself coming from a, a mixed background of uh, Orthodox Judaism with uh, Methodism. And uh, so uh, he married my mother and at some point uh, prior to my birth, uh, he, uh, my mother became a Jehovah Witness. Mm. So my experience of God and of, of faith was via the Jehovah Witness organization up until I was about 13 years of age. Okay. And I kind of got to that age and, you know, I, I definitely would say that I believed in God, but I didn't write quite everything the witnesses were telling me just did was a little off-putting and I, you know, didn't really uh, see that as kind of the path for me. So I uh, you know, stopped going to the Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall that my mother would bring us to several times throughout the week. And uh, my father, again, you know, him not being particularly religious himself, said, well, you know, if he doesn't want to go, he doesn't have to go. So I stopped going. And then I began to uh, get more into my friends and mm. activities and different things. We all had a common interest uh, in music and rock and roll. You know, we loved the Beatles and Zeppelin and different music. So we kind of uh, poured ourselves outside of the school, high school activities into mm -hmm. playing in bands and music and that, you know, mm -hmm. thinking this would be a great vehicle for us for success and for money mm -hmm. and for fame and all these types of things, which are good dreams for us to have, of course, in our life. Um, but the, the challenge, of course, is when you're, when you're doing those with just your own uh, focus, you know, are you looking to do this to be a gift to others or for yourself? And um, I don't know if I quite had the, the formula quite on that, but nonetheless, went on to college after high school, went to Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. Woohoo! I'm a Bobcat. <laughs> Hello, Bobcats <laughs> out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, went there to school, and it was mm -hmm. there in school where I really lost any kind of faith that mm. I had, I have to say. Um, you know, there wasn't really an encouragement for faith there for me. I, I wasn't going to any church or a part of any group. I'm sure they were there on campus, um, but I didn't know or was not involved in that. So I kind of went with the, the flow of things, which was really kind of, you know, um, that there is no God. It's really just a crutch for weak-minded people, you know, and if you really want to be successful in life, you just want to focus on you and your career and how other people might be useful in connecting you to that goal that you yourself select. So I really kind of followed that route. Mm -hmm. um, I did ultimately get a degree from, from college, from my University of Bachelor's of Science okay. uh, in communication. 
And uh, shortly before completing my studies, uh, I had my first serious relationship and a girl mm -hmm. that I dated. And uh, again, we went from one thing right into another. So she was a cat faithful Catholic. And uh, so she said, you know, if you're going to be with me, you're going to date me, you're going to go to Mass with me. Uh, so I was, okay, fine. Well, so I go to Mass <laughs> okay. with her, right? And, and we have this thing called adoration, and, and mm -hmm. she explained what that is. And what that is for folks that might not know, uh, we as Catholic Christians believe that uh, the bread and wine, once it's mm -hmm. consecrated by the priest, actually becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, outside of our, our worship times, um, this bread as, is actually a, can be reserved or, or placed in a, in, a, in a tabernacle or a place, and one can actually come and make visits to that tabernacle to be in that real presence of Jesus Christ. And so we would go to adoration, and off the adoration where we place this consecrated bread, uh, it, it's w where one can actually see it with your own eyes. And it can be a great uh, faith builder, an opportunity for one to really commune God in a particularly a specific and wonderful, amazing, life-changing, transformative way. And that's what really very much what it was for me. And so, um, uh, you know, it, it piqued my interest. Again, uh, I'd heard the Word of God with the Jehovah Witnesses, but I was hearing it again here in the Catholic Church. And this combined with that, the Eucharist, all right, uh, really touched my soul in a deep way. And so then the next logical thing was, well, what would it be to be a Catholic? How does one look to do that? And my girlfriend, you know, really kind of pushed that along and saying, you know, if you were going to be serious with me, you would definitely need to become a Catholic. Oh, wow. Or at least look into it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was open to it, uh, thankfully. And so, yeah, I did uh, that, the, the program that the church has, uh, I hate to say program, but it's an easy term to use right. for, for a way of, of instruction and time okay. and period for you to ask questions about the faith and find out about the faith and whether or not God might be calling you to become Catholic. It's called RCIA, mm. which stands as an acronym that stands for the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. And it could be a period of, of a year, two, three years, as long as you need to find out about the, the Catholic faith, what it is, just from the basics of just uh, you know, who Jesus Christ is, well, who's God, and all these different mm -hmm. types of things. So I went through that program, and uh, Easter Vigil, that's the, uh, the night before Easter Sunday, uh, is when I was baptized, confirmed, and received my first Holy Eucharist, and so then became a Catholic. So this past uh, Easter Vigil, I celebrated 25 years as a oh, Catholic. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Now, again, yeah. on that night, which was, uh, I mean, you really can't even put words to the great joy of becoming a Christian, uh, becoming a Christian Catholic, even of having the water, you know, uh, renew you and strengthen mm -hmm. you, and uh, just a beautiful, amazing moment. And now I never could have predicted all this for me. That's right. But God has a plan for each and every oh. one of us. And the more we really open ourselves to Him and get to know His voice, to know Him personally, the more He can begin to, to uh, we can begin to know what He is asking of us and help us along on our way. And that is a way. Uh, that leads to peace, to joy, and mm. to love. What a great description. I want to thank you because especially the way that you described the Eucharist and, and even Eucharistic adoration was just perfect. Well, thank you. And, yes. and just sharing yourself with our viewers. Um, I, do it. I know that we didn't touch on this yet, but Father is the vocation director for the Mercedarian Religious Order. I was wondering if you could just explain to our viewers what that means. Well, yes, of course. Well, what's a vocation? I think our, our usual uh, sense of vocation for, for everyone in general, uh, we would think of a job or, or, or a profession. We might think, or even could be a housewife, right? Or a, a person that spends the time raising the children. These are all a sense of vocation. Mm -hmm. And that is true. That is true. But when the Catholic Church speaks about a vocation, it's more or better to say kind of a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. In the sense of, uh, as the Catholic Church sees it, majority of people are probably called to what we call the vocation of matrimony or marriage to be married, to joining your, your life with another person for life, to be that person you're journeying with that helps you to get to heaven. Hey, I like that. You know, yeah. That's the majority. But besides that, there are some people that God calls in a sp particular special way to, be, to consecrate themselves to God for the good of others. And this is the idea of nuns or monks or sisters or priests and brothers. And um, again, this is something that some people are called to. Not the majority, but some people. And then, of course, there's a vocation also to the single life. People that are not called, say, to marriage per se, or called to, 
to be a consecrated religious, um, but ones that consecrate themselves in a particular way as a single individual to be more available and open to the needs of others. And so as a Catholic, it's really one is impressed, or it should be impressed upon them, to discover what is God's path for me in my life. And again, by drawing close to him, getting to know his voice, both in the word, the Bible, and in the sacraments, uh, one can begin to find out, as we ask that question, what is God asking me in this life? Yes, a job or career, but also, besides that, am I called to be, to be married? Am I called to be a priest or a sister or a brother? Am I called to be a single individual? And a, a, a big portion of the church is to help individuals to, to discover what that is. And me as a vocation director, to help assist individuals uh, in making that determination. Now, some people, this is the first time you're hearing it and you're already married, well, you're already set, right? <laughs> you know your vocation. Although there can be vocations in the vocation, I might add. A good number of, uh, of the men may be called to the permanent diaconate because there might be somebody watching who is interested in a vocation as you talked about during the first half. Well, that's right. As I mentioned, uh, of course, vocation and a calling. Uh, my particular vocation that I'm a part of and that I help to direct others to determine if they're called to would be to the Mercedarian Friars. And uh, we are a religious order that was founded about 800 years ago in Spain. And uh, it was founded in order to redeem Christians that were held captive of the Spanish Muslims at that time. Mm -hmm. It was a great need in the church of, of literally gathering monies up, going to the Muslim captors and buying the Christian slaves from them in order to return them to their homes and to their families. And so that's the work that we did initially there in the 13th, 13th century, 14th century, in that time period. And if money was insufficient, we would actually use ourselves as collateral if need be. And uh, from that time to this moment today, we still actually, as a religious, uh, we consecrate so by taking vows, like married people we know take vows, uh, we as co religious, consecrated religious, take vows as well, of course, of poverty, to be poor, uh, to not be of always wanting things materially, uh, a vow of chastity, uh, we don't marry, we stay celibate for the kingdom, and uh, also a vow of uh, obedience, right? Uh, that way, if we're told, hey, you know, you, we need you to move to this city and do this kind of work, uh, we are open to that. Uh, really trusting that these are ways that we can be more open to God and be open to what He has us. Now, as Mercedarians, we also take a fourth vow that's unique to the order of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mercy or the Mercedarian Friars, and that's a blood vow or a vow that gives us that, uh, that ability to say yes to something that might well cost us our lives. Um, so it tends to make us Mercedarians really all in with things, and that was always a big attraction for me when I was trying to figure out my place uh, in the church and uh, and in the world and in the life uh, of, of for, uh, for me to live. Uh, so the Mercedarian Friars have been in the United States nearly 100 years and we do serve in, in uh, this uh, area in the uh, Archdiocese of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We serve in the Archdiocese of, I'm sorry, the Diocese of Buffalo, New York, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Diocese of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, which is where we first started ministering uh, about 100 years ago. Uh, in the diocese down in Florida, we head south, right, to uh, the diocese of St. Petersburg. And then as of about four months now, we have been also in the diocese of St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, and it's been a blessing Wonderful. to serve uh, individuals uh, in those places. And we, again, are always looking forward to uh, having more men join us in this mission, okay? Uh, we are an order here in the U.S. of about 24 men, which isn't a lot of guys. So we've got uh, plenty of opportunity for you to come and be part of this family. Uh, we look for men that are, uh, again, of course, one of the things is to become Catholic. So we, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. but if you're not Catholic, you could mm. look into becoming Catholic. It worked well mm. for me and many people, right? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but, uh, and, and yeah. if, you're, if you've never, if you maybe thought about being Catholic but never have done so, maybe my speaking to you now could be that invitation. Look into think about becoming Catholic. It's a very mm. beautiful and wonderful it expression uh, of, of life and faith, uh, and it will definitely be an adventure uh, that you could never imagine. Um, so that would be number one. But if you are certainly a Catholic male, uh, aged 18 to 35, we're really looking for that age group uh, who are not married, um, maybe God's calling you to become a Mercedarian friar. 
uh, as, as a brother or as a priest. And you can find out more information about our order and, and uh, how one begins that and my contact information at the website of orderofmercy.org. Orderofmercy.org. Yeah, and yeah. I would just encourage you to, to contact uh, me. Uh, there's a form you can fill out or an email that you can send or, or text or uh, you can even find us on Facebook uh, or Instagram. Uh, I'd love to be in conversation with you and, and talk about, you know, uh, where is God maybe calling you in your life? We do have sisters as well. I'll make a yes. quick shout out for our Mercedarian Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, they are uh, located in, uh, here in the States in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, down in uh, Calif Southern California, in uh, Louisiana, uh, and also in Florida. And uh, again, a wonderful group of, of women who love the Lord and particularly are focusing in on, of course, uh, freeing people from captivities, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that as well for us as the mm, male, definitely. but also particularly in freeing them through the Eucharist. Now, yes, again, captivity. Of course, we would say, but maybe they're here in the United States or here in, you know, in Cherry Hill, in New Jersey. You know, there, there isn't like you know people being put in balls and chains and slaves and free, and we need the need to free them. But the reality is, the, the order now looks at this situation and says, here's what we're really after. Anywhere where a human person's dignity is under attack. That's right. Where a person's human dignity is not what it should be, that's a form of putting someone in captivity. And these people need to be freed. And what can we do to help them in that situation? So that now, from the little focus that it was in the 1300s, 1400s, now opens a wide spectrum. We can think of so many places where people are in a captivity of some form where they're not being treated properly or in the right way. Human trafficking, people in prison, people who don't know the love of God. Maybe even people that have gone to church every Sunday their whole life That's do right. not know deeply and profoundly God's love for them and his desire to heal them and to set them free for the greater things that he has in mind. So I love how you describe that, thank you. There's so many possibilities that are out there and to be a part of that, that's kind of what our mission as the Mercedarian Friars are, wherever we find ourselves. What's that captivity? What can we do personally to make the difference, to free them from that? Yes, you know? and I'm so grateful too. Because yeah. as I said at the <laughs> beginning of the show, that he was the original person that I met and maybe wasn't into the you know deep captivity, but was in a place in my own life where I was uh, really searching yeah. and needing some help and I'm very grateful that the Mercedarian uh, community and, and becoming actually a member of the Third Order, that's another thing, oh, right. I forgot a lay, to that. for lay persons, I've become a member. And then even working as the director uh, for the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation, you can find us at nonatus.org, and we're all about helping families in crisis. So yeah. I'm just so grateful. Love St. Raymond, God, love St. Raymond. That's right. Did you want to talk about the Third Order? We should talk about the Third Order, yeah. So maybe, uh, you are a married man or woman. Uh, maybe you're a man who's not in the age range of 18 to 35. So you're like, oh, but I really love what you guys are about and what you stand for. I would love to be a part of that. Well, we've got, we've got the possibility of the Mercedarian lay fraternity or what we call third order. Uh, see, the, we call, these are just some terms, kind of inside terms, but the friars, like myself, are what is known as the first order. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the consecrated nuns, uh, female, second order, and the third order is really for the uh, lay faithful people, regular ordinary people mm -hmm. that wanted to grow closer to God and particularly in a certain expression of the faith and most all religious congregations or orders have uh, f uh, people that do this kind of thing and so do we as well and uh, so if that's something you're interested in, do we have a, we know the website for that? Um, yes, now unfortunately yeah. we're coming to the close of oh, the right, show. Oh, very good, so That means he's gonna come back. <laughs> but their website, please be sure to check it out, is orderofmercy.org and there's all kinds of information. I just love your website. Thank you so yeah, much, Yeah, you done a great it. job with it, yeah. great job with it. So I was wondering if you wanted to, you know, say any more words before we end the show? Well, what I'd love to do if we could just real quickly is maybe and with a oh, quick prayer, please. and then okay. if I could to offer a blessing okay. to everyone. Thank out. you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We praise you, O Lord God. All glory be to, to God the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever uh -huh. and always. And may the blessing of Almighty God be upon you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you oh, so much welcome. for coming Thank on the positive I side. For much. Father Daniel Bowen with the Mercedarian Friars and Anne DeSantis from the positive side, we'll see you next time.